So today we're beginning a new sermon series on the Sermon on the Mount. It'll go through Epiphany, which is uh, well into February. And by the way, speaking of February, for those of you who might be new to Salem and want to uh, get to know Salem more or even become a member, uh, the second Sunday of February we'll have a Taste of Salem, a free lunch for anybody who's interested, taking place after this worship service down the hall here at the lounge. And then we'll also be beginning a new Salem 101 class, and we'd love to have you come be a part of that. There's no commitment to joining after taking the class, but it would be your next step toward becoming a member. We'll let you know more about the dates and times of those classes uh, in the next couple of weeks. I also want to thank the many of you who participated in our 50-50 giving initiative as we came to the end of uh, 2022. And we're just delighted to say at the moment we've got 87,000, a little more than that, that's come in. And I know there is a little more evidently coming in as well, so there's still opportunity. But just thankful for that generous uh, giving, that spirit that's going to make of such a difference here at Salem as well as with our mission partners out in the world. Let's continue in prayer. God, thank you so much for the gift you give us of ministry and all we have to celebrate this morning as we welcome a new staff member, as we welcome in new members, God, as we welcome each other, as you, oh God, welcome us into your presence. We come, oh God, into your holy presence now, worshiping, praising you, and also by your grace, with your help, Lord, we come to listen. Grant us ears to hear what you would say to each one of us and all of us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So a few years ago, my wife Donna and I had a friend who got married. And after she got married, she got pregnant. And she told us that uh, she didn't plan on her lifestyle changing at all. <laughs> and we're like, okay, <laughs> good luck with that. Um, I, I don't know about my wife, but I haven't asked that woman uh, since she had children if her lifestyle has changed, but I'm guessing that it actually has changed drastically, significantly. As we look at the Sermon on the Mount this coming uh, season, we're hearing Jesus talk to us about how the world is changing or actually has changed changed. In Matthew chapter 4, after Jesus has been baptized, he goes into the wilderness, he's tested by the devil, and then he comes out of that, it says that John the Baptist was arrested, and Jesus, when John, was the, Bap John the Baptist was arrested, began his ministry. He came into Galilee and started teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news. Uh, and in Matthew 5, we start to hear what some of that good news is, what it is that Jesus is teaching. In fact, the Gospel of Matthew is uh, the most of the Gospels, the, 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 the biggest one that focuses in on Jesus' teaching, as Jesus as an instructor and as Jesus the one whom we should obey. And so right in chapter 5, we have his inaugural address where as the crowds are coming to him, he begins to tell them that here's how things are. In Matthew 4, chapter 17, as he began his ministry, he said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Like, this is the new reality. And based on this reality, here's what you need to know. Just the, the way things are now. Matthew 5, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you 
when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus is telling them, this is just the way it is now. Many people thinking of the Beatitudes, thinking of the Sermon on the Mount, talk about it as something that will be true when we get to heaven, in that future, when we get there. But what Jesus is teaching in Matthew 4, in, John, uh, Math, in Mark chapter 1, in the Gospel of Luke as well, is that heaven has already come, that it's here. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. So here's what you need to know. This friend of ours, I haven't asked her, you know, has life changed? But I would think about this as like a counselor going to her before she had children and saying, you know, the truth of the matter is when you have children, life's going to be very different. That's just the way it's going to be. But what we have with Jesus coming here is like a counselor saying to a woman who is actually going through the contractions of birth. The baby is coming out, and the counselor says, your life is going to be different now. Your life is different. The change is happening. It's not in the future. It's happening right now. Do you understand that? Do you get that? This is the key thing that we need to understand as we hear Jesus proclaiming the kingdom of heaven has come near. Jesus is not just talking about that future way off in the distance. He's telling us that that future is breaking in here and now. This is why in Luke chapter 4, when Jesus goes into his hometown of Nazareth and he pulls out the prophet Isaiah and he reads from that these words. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of, the sight, of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The kingdom of heaven is breaking in. In the first chapter of Mark, when Mark is describing this beginning of Jesus' ministry, he has very similar words to how Matthew tells the story. And what Mark tells us is that Jesus enters into Galilee at the beginning of his ministry, and he says, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of heaven has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Here's the good news. Heaven has come near. It's breaking in. Repent. Turn to God. Believe the good news. At the end of this season of Epiphany, we come to Ash Wednesday. If you come to our service on Ash Wednesday, we'll impose ashes if you want us to on your forehead or on your wrist. And what we'll say to you at the same time is repent and believe the good news. As you face your mortality, of those ashes, as you face the reality of your sin and falling short of the glory of God, the call of God, here's what we want for you. Just what Jesus wants for you. Repent and believe the good news. Believe that the kingdom of God is breaking in right here and now for you. No wonder this is called good news. It's not just good news that someday in the future you get this. It's good news because Jesus is fulfilling the prophecies of Scripture right now in our hearing as he enters in. Blessed are you, Jesus says at the Sermon on the Mount as he tells the Beatitudes, blessed are you, the poor in spirit. You know, those of you who are brokenhearted, who feel helpless in the face of the evil of our world or the sin in your own life, Blessed are you who are poor in spirit, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Maybe there's room in you for heaven to break in and give you what you can never give yourself, that spirit of God, to bless you 
and strengthen you. Blessed are you who mourn, you know, who are grieving over the loss of loved ones through death, who are grieving as you face illness that you just don't seem to be able to overcome or pain that just keeps on chronically attacking your body or relationships that are broken, dreams that are crushed. Blessed are you who mourn, for you will be comforted. Heaven is breaking in. Blessed are the meek. You know, those who don't think they're all that powerful in this world, who recognize that they're not all that, who aren't puffing themselves up, but who are willing to rely on the power and the promises of God and venture forward anyway. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Heaven's breaking in. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. You know, those who hunger and thirst, maybe you're one of them. You long to see the streets of Minneapolis at peace, the people of our nation in love with one another, the nations of the world turning their spears into plowshares. Maybe you long for that. Maybe you're one who longs for righteousness and justice in our world so much that you're a little bit of a perfectionist and you look down on everybody else and maybe you look down on yourself all the time. You just can't quite come up to all that you expect of yourselves and nobody else does either. Blessed are you. You will be filled. Heaven is breaking in. Blessed are the pure in heart, those who aren't puffed up, who are honest with themselves and with God who are just willing to come clean with God. They'll see God. They'll receive God's blessing, his light. Blessed are the peacemakers, those ones who are always in the middle of things, getting squashed between the warring parties. You think about our peacemakers in different parts of the world or police officers who step into a a domestic violence situation. These people are fighting with each other. Suddenly the police officer is there and their anger turns on that person, the officer. It's a dangerous place to be, the one who's trying to find that middle path, that way for us to work together, for us to be reconciled like Jesus on the cross. You know what happens to people who try to reconcile to provide a way. It just happens. Blessed are the peacemakers, for you will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Now, blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven, which is breaking in, by the way. Blessed are you when you're doing your best to follow God's call, to do what is right, and it's not going to make you any money or maybe even in the friends that you'd like to have, but you're going to follow God's leading to the best of your ability. You're going to walk with integrity. You're going to try to do the right thing, knowing that the right thing is not always rewarded in this world. Blessed are you. Rejoice and be glad. For the kingdom of heaven is breaking in. This is why Jesus says there in Mark chapter 1, repent and believe the good news. We can't do this on our own. We need the help of God. That's why that first beatitude is the first one, I believe. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Because we need to understand what Jesus is teaching as we go through this Sermon on the Mount and all of Jesus' teaching, the Gospel of Matthew and the whole of the New Testament, that what Jesus is teaching is not just more law to lay on us to say, you better get your act together, and now I'm going to add to it these things. He's saying, blessed are the poor in spirit who recognize that they cannot do it in their own strength and their power and ask for God's help who empty themselves of their prideful ways of saying, I can do this myself, and say, God, I desperately need your grace, your forgiveness, and your help that I may grow in your likeness, that I may grow in all that you intend, that I may be a part of heaven breaking in 
to this world. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That kingdom is breaking in right now. God's spirit is here right now. And Jesus calls us to repent and believe such good news and to live like it. Let's pray together. God, thank you that you are here in this room, that you are here across the miles, wherever anyone may be, as they hear the good news proclaimed by Jesus himself in the Gospel of Matthew. Forgive us our sin, our pride, for getting in the way of your kingdom of heaven breaking in. Oh God, break us down, open up our hearts, enable us to receive your spirit. And may your spirit, God, do that good work in us, among us and through us that we could never do on our own. To your glory. We pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen.